Welcome to another episode of the Zebra Influencer Series. In this episode, we're featuring one of Zebra's innovative technology partners, Bluefletch. They are known for the security management of workforce devices. Like you, I'm curious to know what they know. As a Zebra Senior ISV Manager, I had the distinct honor of working with organizations like Bluefletch and helping them through the Zebra ecosystem. You're in the right place if you're interested in operating more effectively by reducing help desk and operational costs. In this episode, we're going to be hearing from the security management expert and founder of Blue Fletch, Brett Cooper. Brett, welcome. Excellent. Thank you for having me on today, Scott. It's good, it's good to see you again. Same here, Brett. Brett, you have a very impressive background. Could you give the audience a snapshot? Yeah, so I, I my history started out as originally a computer engineer doing computer security in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I've seen a lot of changes in the industry. And then around 2008, started this company right when the iPhone came out and Android started to become a, a new thing everybody's doing. And we focused on mobile technology in the enterprise. So building a lot of custom bespoke apps. And then over the last five or six years have really pivoted the company to focus more on a set of security tools that we built about a decade ago. And as companies have started using those, it's become really popular in the, uh, the uh, industry with the shared Android workspace devices. Hey, Brett, so when did you personally start to focus on security? Yeah, so my passion for security goes back to the uh, the early 90s. So if you, we all remember the movie with, with Matthew Broderick called War Games, but it was really a thing that I, I liked computers. I liked the concept of how, how they worked, understanding how things uh, could be taken apart. And uh, yeah, I specialized at Georgia Tech in network security for my master's in computer engineering. And from there, went into security auditing in the early 2000s, so helping a lot of companies improve the security and their security posture. And then moved on from, from that to getting a master's at a, a university called Emory here in Atlanta. And then uh, you started this company in 08. And along the way, we we're building a lot of different solutions, bespoke Android applications, iOS applications, and um, really focused in the last six years on our set of security tools that help with these shared workforce devices that become so popular. Brent, so over the last 20 years, maybe you can help the audience understand what changes you've seen in the security space. Yeah, so there's really four primary things that I've seen change in, in my career. And the, the first is the actual value of the IT systems. So if you look at what we put on in, in, our, in our warehouses, in our stores, in our supply chain systems, everything is, is incredibly reliant on these, uh, these computers that we're using, whether it's the computers at the edge, the mainframes, the cloud. When things go wrong, it's, it's a lot worse now for businesses than it was 25 years ago. The second area that we run into a lot is just really sophistication of the breaches and the hackers. So 20 years ago, it was mainly people trying to get in through firewalls, get into the systems. Now people jump through third-party applications, through vendors, uh, through devices that are out in the field. The third point is the horsepower of the computers and the technology we have. So if you look at the power of an iPhone in your pocket or your Android phone in your pocket, it's incredibly more powerful than even the, the best computer you had 20 years ago. Um, if you look at password cracking, and in the old days, it would take a couple hours to crack a password. Now, it's, if you threw loft crack at a simple password, it would take seconds. Sorry, the fourth area we, we've seen is there's there's no edge anymore. So it used to be you had a firewall, you protect your, your network, you protect everything. And now you have all these devices that are out in the field, whether they're, they're personal carry mobile devices, whether they're laptops that are at a, 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 a coffee shop or it's a, a mobile device that you have your delivery drivers out with. And this is taking the edge of your network and, and access to it and moving it out. So there's a lot less uh, like protection you can put around your specific network now than you could in the old days. So, Brett, maybe you can help us understand what breaches you guys are seeing in the market today. Yes, the breaches have gotten a lot more sophisticated. There's really two main ones that we see a lot of. One is denial of service, where a hacker or a, a third party will take a bunch of compromised machines, point them at your network, and prevent you from being able to serve your end users or customers. The second main one we see is people jumping into network and trying to steal your data. And a lot of that has gotten more sophisticated. If you look at some of the more recent breaches, the targets or octas, it's been a third party that that company works with that um, really the, the hackers bounce through that organization to get into the systems. So for us, when we think about, or we uh, consult people on thinking about security, one side is thinking about defense in depth, which is you know, having layers around everything. So the layers, the onion that protect your assets and your computer systems. And the second is zero trust. 
So any system you have out there, you just assume it's going to get compromised and make sure that you build processes that will protect you from any of your points getting compromised along the way. So with that being said, Brett, what is Blue Fletch and what are you guys at Blue Fletch um, doing to solve some of those security issues? And so Blue Fletch, we have a security tool set. We call it Blue Fletch Enterprise. And it's focused on, it, really, there's two things we focus on. One is securing shared workforce devices. So have, you have these devices where a user will pick up their TC51 or TC52 at the beginning of the day, log into it, perform all the activities. And for us, it's it's how do we secure those sessions? How do we make it where when that user's done with their shift, all their data is wiped off the device and it's in a clean, secure state? Um, the second piece for us is improving the experience of the end user. So how do how do we actually have password systems where a user is not typing in their passwords 20 times a day? We did a recent study with one of our customers and based on, I think they had eight different apps, based on the amount of password uh, logins we, we saved for each user across their fleet of devices, it ended up being about $800 a year in cost savings they had per device just on passwords wow. alone. Wow. So maybe you can, um, we have common customers, obviously. Can you tell us more about how some of the Zebra customers are using your tool site? Yeah. So the, with Zebra, one of the big things is uh, people are starting to put more and more functionality as devices. So whether it's using Zebra's Workforce Connect or you know, Reflexus in the, in, in the retail space, but not just that, but all these other applications. So Oracle, SAP, Mail, it, we've just seen people starting to, like the example I just gave, where they're putting eight different applications or 12 different applications in front of their associates. So for us, it's you know, these customers, they don't want people logging in more than once. They want to have a good login experience one time a day or one per you know, one time per their shift since it is a shared device. Okay. And uh, you know, with Zebra, we, we just make that process so much smoother. So the you know, user is, uh, yeah, we have a security side and then we have that user experience side for the passwords. So and with Zebra, I think we're, um, one of the primary partners for Workforce Connect around being able to do SSO or, or single sign-on with that tool as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and with the customers being so highly focused on the edge and the user's interaction with their application or devices, um, maybe you can help us understand who inside the customer ideally benefits from using BlueFetch. So, so for us, there's there's two typical buyers that are really most interested in us. One is on the operations side, where you have people that are focused on employee efficiency, you know, reducing the amount of training that employees have to have to become effective at their jobs. So, that, so that's one side, the store ops and um, or warehouse operations or delivery operations. That's, that's one category of buyers for us. And the, and the second is the, um, the guys that are in charge of infrastructure or device management. So they and normally it's somebody who's deploying MDMs or managing security systems. So whether it's Okta, right. Ping, uh, they're, they're in charge of those types of things. And it's, it, you know, it ranges from a you know, director of IT infrastructure to uh, you know, device management VP. It's, it, it, every company has different titles, but the, 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 the crux of it is the guy's responsible for managing devices and managing the security on them. Understood. So, I mean, you mentioned some of the individuals that you work with inside of the organization, but what are some of the top reasons Blue Fletch has become widely adopted by uh, Zebra's customers? I think that the reasons when we look at it, the the, the biggest one, um, like I mentioned earlier, is just cost savings around single sign-on. So if you can save $800 a device per year of labor costs, that's huge. Um, another knock-on effect is lost devices. When you do have... Uh, log in and visibility into the data for who's logging in where, who had what device last, it creates a lot more accountability and reduces the number of lost devices you had. So I think we have, uh, for most customers we work with, typically we have 8 to 12% of their devices get lost or stolen every year. And as they start to use our tools, that number drops, uh, drops drastically. Brett, so I know you mentioned $800 and the device is being lost, but um, can you, and know the audience is starting to think, you know, what's my return on investment uh, for this? Yeah, yeah so the, we think about the return on investment. There's, you know, the tangible area is, the easiest way to calculate it is the amount of time you're saving on logins. So if I can cut out five logins a day times 30 seconds times $10. So for that one customer I mentioned, yeah, they had, I think it was eight apps and ended up averaging $841 a year in savings for the devices. The lost devices themselves, you know, a, a 
ruggedized Android device will cost you between six hundred and two thousand dollars. So if you can save uh, two to three hundred of those for your fleet every year, you know, whether they get lost on a shelf or get lost in a box or accidentally left at a client site, um, if you can save that, it really uh, it saves you a lot. And then. Yeah, I think the other thing that's it's an intangible around savings is the security aspect. So as you look at, uh, I look at security like insurance, nobody, nobody really cares about insurance until their house burns down or their car gets in an accident. And security is that same way. It's one of these things that a, I think the average breach is over $4 million for, for most enterprises if they do have a, a data breach. And I know there's highs and lows there, but you know, the, uh, the amount of, of, of money you could lose in, in one breach, not just in somebody stealing things, but also in goodwill with your customers is, is incredibly high. So Brett, in, is this just for losing a device that we have a breach? Like, can you help explain, uh, explain that a little further? Yeah. So one of the, the things that we starting to see a, a lot more, uh, from a trending standpoint, and I mentioned this earlier is you have a lot more applications that are going on these devices. These, these new devices are incredibly powerful. You know, the network speeds are, are spectacular on them. They're very ruggedized. They've, they've become the cornerstone for most employees. A lot of companies are even just getting rid of laptops and just having users take a handheld. So, so with that, you have the, a, a vulnerability, whether it's somebody setting a device down that's logged in or uh, a, a hacker picking up a device and trying to look and take credentials from the last session and be able to figure out how the user logged in, do replay attacks. But that's for us, you know, those those things are what we pr we're protecting against. We you know, we're wiping all that cache, secure data. We're containerizing and preventing people from getting to settings, and really focused on if a device does get lost or stolen, it is not going to be the the way a hacker gets into your network. Interesting, man. So I mean, just changing topics a little bit, Brett. Um, I know because of our long-standing relationship, Blue Fletch got started on building custom enterprise applications. Can you tell the audience a little bit more if you guys still build custom apps for your customers? We do. Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of a lot of applications. That's actually how we, we got started working with with Zebra. I think one of the first very, very large Android deployments, I think it was the first uh, more than 10,000 devices. But we've been working with uh, what was previously Motorola, but now Zebra since uh, you know, 2010, 2011, in the Windows CE days. And, you know, for us, the uh, the growth we've seen in people wanting to put devices out there and put new apps on has really been the, the driver for our company. So we started out doing custom apps. So whether it's going from a green screen app or Windows C app to uh, to a native Android or going from iOS over to Android, that's something we, we, we definitely grew and built a lot of skills. And it's it's still about 50% of our business. I'm surprised that you, you know 10 years after Android has come out, we, we still see so many companies that are migrating from uh, Windows CE. And now we're actually start, starting to see a lot of people moving from iOS to Android because Android is just a better, a better platform for the enterprise from a standpoint of control and security. Yeah, Brett, so, and I know in, uh, in our network, you work a lot with our value added resellers. Maybe you can dive in and help us understand how you work with them. Yep. So there's, there's two ways we, we typically work with resellers. The, the primary one is referral agreements. So they're, a lot of the resellers have really good relationships with customers and they recognize, hey, there's a tool we need. You know, this Blue Fletch tool will fit great on top of the MDM our client is using, or it'll help uh, improve the security posture that our, our, our end clients are looking for. So uh, referral agreements. So we, we do that a lot with our resellers. And then we have a number of resellers that they've done referral agreements with initially and gotten to the point where they're starting to learn about the tools and then they're handling sales and just putting it on their paper. So it's, you know, it, it's really that, that the step up once they're, once it makes sense for them to, um, to have the commitment to allocate resources on their side. And then with, with resellers, what we also do uh, agreements around, uh, the you know, building the bespoke apps that you mentioned earlier. So a lot of, a lot right. of clients want to move fast, but they just don't have the internal resources to migrate apps to Android and we're the guys that people bring in to help make that move fast. Awesome. Hey, so maybe you can explain to us a little bit more about your philosophy around exclusivity and channel conflict. Like, how do you guys manage that? Yeah, that's it's a good question. I think for <laughs> us, the, uh, the the phrase Richard and I use, my business partner and I use, is that we want to we want to leave the dance with the same girl we showed up at the dance with. Uh, no, nobody wants to go to prom and get dumped by uh, whoever whoever drove them to prom. So we feel that same way. Uh, uh, <laughs> about our, our partnership engagement. So we, we really look after, um, you know, if somebody brings us into a deal and we're, uh, are working with us on that, we're going to stick with them and, 
you know, it's caused us to lose some opportunities because, you know, that reseller we went in with didn't get it. But at the end of the day, we're, we're here uh, for the long term. We're here to build the relationships and really work with our partners and build that trust and build those relationships. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that creates a lot of integrity between you and the, in the channel. Um, so talking a little bit about something that's a little bit more fun, maybe you can tell the audience how you guys came up with the name Blue Fletch. Yeah, so people always ask us if we're big Chevy Chase fans, and I, I am a big Chevy Chase fan, but most people are starting to not know the movie Fletch because it's, it's getting it's getting old. But um, for us, we, we started the company in 2008, and it, it was a time when mobility was changing. So it was Windows CE and BlackBerry in the early 2000s, and then 2007 or fall 2007, the iOS or, or iOS was released by Apple. Um, so we saw mobility coming into the space and there was a concept at the time um, called blue ocean strategy which is where are the new spaces where there are not incumbents since so that's really the where we got the the concept of blue so we saw mobility in 2008 as as a blue ocean and the second piece the the arrows on the back of a feather are known as fletching and so those actually tell you you know, they, they, not only do they guide the arrow, the arrow, but if you look at them, they're different colors. So, you know, depending on which, uh, you know, which fletch you have, you know, there'll be an odd color one. That's the one, that's how you hold the arrow out. So that was the origin of the name was, was blue fletch came from the concept of blue ocean strategy and the fletching on an arrow. Oh, that's awesome, Brett. Uh, I think most of us have read that uh, blue ocean strategies book. So, <laughs> um, can you tell us how your customers explain what blue fletch does to their internal customers? So I think they're, they always say it used to be, these are the guys that solve the tough problems. So we brought these guys in to solve our tough problems because we just need to, to move fast. And now it's really turned into, these are the guys that we bring in to help with security and managing the security on our shared workforce devices. Excellent. So you give us some examples on how customers use blue fetch to solve tough problems. Yeah, a, a good one would be, there's a big airline client and they I think they released some some news about this a couple of years back, but they wanted to have better communication between their different associate or the different employees. So the pilots, flight attendants, ramp, gate, tower, and uh, if you've ever been to an airport, we've always seen the the person pick up the gate phone at the end of the gate, and you know there's somebody else on a radio or walkie-talkie, and then the uh, the pilots are typing things into what's called like an ACAR system. And we um, we got brought in. I said, how do we have better communication amongst these different parties assigned to a flight? And we went through and built that out with them, did, did pilots, tested it out. And I think the, uh, the CEO, when he talked about it last year, he said it had saved them over a billion dollars in the last, uh, last three years. Wow. Oh, that's a, a big problem. Uh, what a big dollar amount associated to it. Um, you know, so now help the viewers and the audience understand what should be their main takeaway from this conversation. I think that the biggest takeaway is if you have a customer that, that has shared workforce devices, and are looking to have single sign-on or improve the security of those devices, reach out to Blue Fletch, give us, give us a call, and we're more than happy to hop on the phone and walk through how we can help you solve that problem. Hey, Brett, could you tell the viewers how they could find out more about Blue Fletch? Definitely. You can find, uh, find out more about us at bluefletch.com, which is B-L-U-E-F-L-E-T-C-H. Or you can hit us up on the, uh, the LinkedIn or Instagram and if you're uh, if you're ever interested in find out more about it, you can also find us on the uh, zebra partner portal or partner finder awesome brett thank you so much brett on behalf of zebra technologies i want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience specifically in the security space as mentioned earlier we invite our audience to contact their channel partners as well as their zebra representatives or brett and his team at bluefletch.com uh, so you can find out more about security management of your workforce devices. I want to thank you for your time, attendance, and attention. Remember, Zebra and our partner network and Alliance community are committed to your success.